assalamu alaikum the topic for my today's lecture is legislation and fashion laws this presentation is the part 1 of this topic which covers the introduction and the history of fashion law what is legislation in simple words legislations are laws passed by a legislative body they are designed to deal comprehensively and sensibly within a defined set of issues presenting the public with clear sets of rules to follow legislation refers to the preparation enactment of laws by legislative body through its law making process the, legis the legislative process include evaluating amending and voting on proposed laws it is concerned with the words used in the bill to communicate the values judgments and purposes of the proposal <coughs> history of fashion law history of fashion law has been through many stages for thousands of years governments have tried to control spending by employing sumptuary laws which restricts excessive personal expenditures in the interest of preventing extravagance and luxury these laws have been defied by many obeyed by many deprived many of their basic human rights and we can say that the history of fashion is very very dark it is very discriminating on the basis of gender on the basis of social classes um, and uh, people have used these kinds of um, you you may you might even you you will even see that uh, in the history there have been restrictions due to um, trade war also sumptuary laws what are sumptuary laws sumptuary laws are any laws designed to restrict excessive personal expenditure usually done on moral and religious grounds sumptuary laws by romans and the western world we will see in this area the first law under the roman republic ruled that women could not wear more than half an ounce of gold upon their persons and the tunic should not be in different colors roman lawfully tried to control spending on funerals banquets and festivals The emperor Tiberius ruled that no silken cloth should be used by men as it is considered disgrace for men such soft fabric was considered fit only for women the roman male was a tough character who was not allowed to wear eastern imports in 1322 wearing of silk and scarlet clothes was forbidden in florence by its citizens they were not allowed to wear silk and scarlet cloth outside their houses in 1366 perugia banned wearing of velvet silk and satin within its boundaries the law did not permit the commercial classes to own garments made up of silver uh, silk brocade velvet and other rich fabrics laws in the western the romans have applied uh, western world the romans have applied sumptuary laws equally to all men and women whereas in western europe the law were more discriminatory restricting the richest fabric furs and jewels to only the rich ones during 1337 in england the law did not allow anyone below the rank of a knight to wear fur only english made cloth could be worn in england the stool role of ensuring class distin distri distinctions and banning imported goods was a common in sumptuary laws the laws were made to prevent people dressing above their social status merchants were only allowed to wear clothes uh, expensive clothes like knights only if they were five times wealthier poor class could not wear silk cloth of silver chains jewels or buttons made up of exp expensive material or gems they were not allowed to wear short coats or tunics worn by noblemen 
farmer and laborer were to wear only brownish cloth that was worth a shilling a yard or undyed blanket cloth farmers were restricted to natural wool tones brownish tones which they continued to wear till the 20th century only lords were allowed to wear gold and silver and fur and women were also not allowed to wear silver or gold girdles or foreign silk head scarves similar laws clearly specifying the fabrics the style and the color to be worn by men and women of particular social and economic standings were issued in spain and france all this was done on religious and moral grounds in france and england it was ov- often claimed that such laws were issued for moral or religious reasons they made people believe that god was very angry because he could not recognize a person's quality from his clothes a similar excuse has been given in on the ground that god was displeased by ex- excessive and inordinate apparel they even used to restrict foreign import or trade war uh, in 17th century sumptuary laws were increasingly used to restrict foreign imports and had began to have less to do with status than with the trade war france for example was trying to set up its own silk industry therefore banned italian silk and english cloth italy and spain however continued issuing class distinction restrictions on dress until 18th century In Russia laws regarding apparel were used to modernize the country after returning from London Tsar Peter I ordered his princes to shave their beards then in 1701 he ruled that his subjects must adopt western dress Peter's command applied to both men and women but at first affected only members of the court and government officials Merchants and peasants continued to wear traditional garments into the 19th and sometimes even the 20th century. A similar attempt to modernize a nation through its clothing was made by Kamal Atatürk in Turkey in 1925. Laws were passed being the first and requiring uh, sorry. Laws were passed banning the fez and requiring panama hats to be worn. To some Turks wearing western attire instead of traditional garments was highly unacceptable. With the rise of Islam in the late 20th century, Rebellion against the established law or dominant fashion has been observed throughout the history of costume. The reasons prompting such rebellions are various: to shock, to attract attention, to protest against the traditional social order, and to avoid current trends and avoid looks considered outdated or old-fashioned. One of the earliest forms of such rebellion has taken and continues to take has been that of women adopting male dress. By donning men's clo- men's clothing, women have been able to challenge the status quo and participate in activities or roles traditionally perceived as masculine. There are several examples of women who put male armor to go to war, like Queen Tomyris of Mesopotamia. led her troops against Cyrus II of Persia and killed him in 1080 duchess geta of lombardy rode in full male armor along her husband the practice of women wearing male dress has not always been accepted however in 1429 john of arc 
Joan of Arc adopted male clothes. This was included among the charges against her when she was tried by the Bishop of Beauvais. The bishop said her claim that God and angels and saints have told her to don male attire was contradicting to the modesty of women. It was prohibited by the divine law and was forbidden by the church. John confessed to error and was ordered to wear women's clothing. She then in the jail or the prison reverted to the male dress. On further questioning, when she was again questioned, she denied her previous confession and was commanded to be burnt. She was actually burnt to obviously for other reasons also, but this was also a charge that she wore male costume. It has not only been for the reason of war to defend their homes or that women have adopted male clothes. In England, ladies were arriving at tournaments in male dresses and armors to parade in the intervals so that they might share in the glory. Women have also found men's clothing more suitable for certain types of work because uh, uh, it was very comfortable to work in the male costume. It was not only a wish for action that made some women adopt male clothing. In the 19th century, there were several examples of women doing so in order to earn main men's wages, which were higher than of women. In 1818, Helen Oliver in Scotland met a plowman who turned out to be a woman, so she copied the idea and, bor and borrowing her brother's suit, went off to work as a plasterer. In 1866, Helen Bruce has been working in male dress since she was 17. As an errand boy, as a shop lad, as a ship talker, as a teleman at a mine, as a clerk. Women, as women were not allowed to become doctors, Mirinda Barry also dressed as a male man and obtained a degree in medicine. She then became an army surgeon and ended her career as Inspector General in Military Hospitals in Canada in 1857. Cultural rebels have often chosen to adopt an antique fashion in order to reject or at least distance themselves from their own time or to identify with what they believe to be a superior age. Sometimes such borrowing from the past become a widely accepted fashion as in the late 18th and 19th centuries when neoclassicism was its, was at its height and women gowns were supposed to be based on ancient Greek and Roman styles. The Roman Empress Messalina Villari led a revolt against Roman dress by wearing Greek clothes herself and by wearing her hair in Greek hairnets and tiara. Her male friends similarly wore colored Greek cloaks instead of the chalky white Roman togas. More recently in 1960s and 70s, many young women and men in the United States adopted the granny look by wearing garments that had been popular 100 years ago, such as collarless shirts, long and high waist cotton dresses, small metal rimmed granny glasses. Uh, this way the wearer expressed their dislike for the contemporary adult establishment and their dress. Artists similarly often prefer older fashion, but this is usually because they wish to achieve an effect of timelessness. The invention and widespread of photography has effectively abolished any further need for the establishment of a specific clothing policy for art in opposition to the high fashion. It has become acceptable for painters and sculptors like photographers to render contemporary fashion accurately. Extreme trends are usually avoided. However, portraits of royalty often use uniforms and robes of knighthood to confer a historical character. Similarly, the desire to shock has remained a constant especially among the young, has a significant influence on the fashion scene. Post-war teenagers have both the money and the leisure time necessary to reject the established order and to devise a look of their own. 
including among the styles they introduced are t-shirts and jeans of the 50s as you can see here then long haired hippie looks of the 1960s the punk style of the late 1970s and then we had the conservative preppy look of the 1980s the rock look of 1990s and 2000 looks based on the musical styles of the hip hop foreign influence like rebellion and the adoption of fashion it is also very popular in the history of dress the first the first exotic fabric to reach the west was silk from china which the persian introduced to the greek and romans and which has remained popular to the present another import was the kaftan coat which is believed to have originated in central asia the japanese kimono entered the western wardrobe in the 17th century the english called the garment indian gowns probably because the east india company imported them but the dutch more accurately called them japanese coats the garment was also termed as a nightgown and a banyan and became fashionable for underdress such as gowns such as dressing gowns have such dressing gowns have remained fashionable and now are known as house coats bath robes wraps negligees depending on the material they are used in making them indian pajamas a soft cotton suit consist of trousers and a loose fitted jacket fastened down the front were also used in uh, were also introduced in europe in the early 17th century they too have remained popular for an underdress although the style has so sometimes been adopted for more formal wear many foreign garments are foreign garments are copied or borrowed of necessity like for example in when europeans invaded the americans the english and the french were quick to adopt native american mechanisms because few of the settlers knew how to make shoes the modern western wardrobe include now elements of asia africa native america similarly northwest cultures have adopted some western garments particularly by western style business suits as improved transportation and communication technology effectively shrink the size of the world foreign influences on dress will no doubt continue to be introduced with increasing speed and influence the secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old but building the new this is the famous saying by socrates thank you god bless you